This is the Doc with the SD Weekly Metals and Markets. Joining us today is a special guest host, Jonathan Kahn. He's author of the New York Times bestseller, The Harbinger, as well as a recent book he's released, The Mystery of the Shemitah. It's really a pleasure to uh, have you on here today, Jonathan. Great to be with you. All right, well, let's uh, get r- right into it. I've been quite intrigued, both of your works, um, particularly as just kind of a, a bit of a background here, Jonathan. One of who I believe is one of the top financial experts in our space, his name is Ben Davies, and he wrote a piece in 2011 called There Is No Jubilee, and it was... Ah, it was a financial article and he, he's a hedge fund manager out of London and he he wrote a very in-depth analysis relating our whole boom bust cycle in modern economies to the fact that there's no longer a debt jubilee and he's really probably the only person in finance today that has written anything about that so I've I've long been a follower of his and I t- actually agree with him on that so definitely struck a something with me when you came out with uh, your new book here on the Shemitah. So why let, don't... Uh, let, let, me, let me ask you something, John. You know, <laughs> just, you know, and I don't normally start by asking the interviewer, um, but by saying, just so I can understand, by saying there's no jubilee, um, meaning that there's no, there's no practice of that, of forgiveness of debts, is that, is that what he meant? Correct. He's saying in, in the markets today there's no debt jubilee, and one, that's one of the main reasons we're, we have the, the boom-bust cycles that we see. Um, yeah, so it doesn't happen by people doing it, but then, therefore, it causes consequences with the cycles. Correct, correct. Yes, yeah, okay, that goes, yeah, okay. So uh, for people who aren't uh, familiar, if you could, I guess, to start out here, there's been quite a bit of notoriety in the, in the financial space and alternative media with the release of your recent book with the, the Shemitah tying some of the recent financial clap collapses to the Shemitah. So I guess for yeah. listeners who maybe have not heard of it or, or don't understand, if you could start out uh, with that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The Mystery of the Shemitah, which, uh, which follows the Harbinger, and, and this one just came out actually just before the Shemitah year began, and this came out in September. The Mystery of the Shemitah is a 3,000-year-old mystery that lies behind everything from the rise and fall of the uh, economy, the rise and fall of the financial markets, um, when Wall Street crashes, not only the, the years, but also the months and, at, and also the days. Um, it also is linked to, lies behind the rise and fall of nations, uh, the, the rise of America, and what may be the fall of America. It, it, it gives the, the timing of the rise of global cataclysms, world wars. Um, it even is linked to end-time prophecy. And, uh, and there is actually a mystery in, in the book. There's, there's, all, there's several you know, different streams of mysteries in this. But one of them is called the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, which actually link, links to the Jubilee in a whole different way. But it's an amazing thing because this gives, you know, this is very specific. It, it, it has, uh, it's, as far as I know, it's the only thing that has had the key to n- not just the timing or the season of when Wall Street collapses, but the exact days, I mean, the, of the greatest collapses, long before, years before they happened. And so it is, uh, not only that, you know, but we are now at the beginning of the year of the Shemitah. Um, and so, you know, in the book, I go through the scenarios of what can happen and how to be ready. And without being dogmatic, I do give the dates, because there are, there are set dates concerning the Shemitah. Um, so it is really gigantic. I mean, this thing has been affecting us, all of us, everyone listening, from the, from the moment we were born. I mean, up until now, it's the, really the key to the past, the present, and I believe the future. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's just a gigantic thing. Could you, uh, for the listeners, again, who aren't really familiar with it, could you give us some perspective of some of the past occurrences and yeah. what might yeah. tie into it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, first, <clears throat> to kind of set the stage so people understand the Shemitah, begins actually on Mount Sinai when um, Moses gives the law of the Shemitah, which is in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy and, and Exodus. And basically it says this, that, that you know, you're going you're to work for six years, and the seventh year is going to be entire rest. The land is going to rest. It's a Sabbath rest, not just for a day, but for a year. And so there's no sowing or reaping. There's no activity. And in a sense, it's an economic cessation. And on the last day of, the, of this Sabbath year, um, the date in the in the biblical calendar is called Elul 
29, or the 29th day of the month of Elul. On that day, uh, a unique thing happens, and that is that all debt is wiped away, all credits wiped away, the financial accounts of the nation are basically wiped clean. Now, and, and the Sabbath year was called the Shemitah. So therefore, they're in the mystery. You know? So the, the, the thing is that as Israel, ancient Israel, turned away from God, what happened is the Shemitah comes back at them in, you know, at, in the form of judgment or cataclysm. And so what happens is it actually uh, it strikes the nation, and it's a kind of a sign on a nation that has totally departed from its foundations, totally uh, gone against the ways of God and, the, and its blessings, and, and ultimately it strikes the financial realm and the economic realm. So there's a link right there with you, we were talking about at the beginning where, you know, if you don't do something voluntarily, you know, which, then it comes back in another way. And so, so the, the big question is, you know, could, how, could this, this mystery or this, this, this pattern and what can become a sign of, of coming disaster, could this be affecting us now? And the answer is yes. And an example, in the last... 40 years. I mean, you know, and, and just to say, it's, you know, it, this is the financial realm, this is the economic realm, this is the, the political realm, the w- world history. I mean, all, it's gigantic. So, the, but looking first at the financial realm, in the last uh, 40 years, there have been five major turning points of the long term uh, stock market collapses or financial downturns, which often lead to, to re- global recessions, uh, the, where, you know, the market reaches its peak and then goes down. And one was 1973. Uh, the next was 1980. The, the next is 1987. Then it was 2000 and 2007. And with, with the, first of all, there, just notice something about that. There's a pattern right there. Every single one of them is linked, is on a seven-year cycle, every single one of them, to the crash, the collapse before, the collapse after. And in fact, you know, even in the middle of this, the, the people say, well, what about 1994? That's in the middle. 1994, you had the greatest bond market collapse um, in, in, up to that point called the Great Bond uh, Market Massacre uh, right in the same, the same period. And the thing is, so, but then the next question is, it's not just a seven-year cycle. Do any of them actually happen on the actual biblical appointed time of the Shemitah of this seventh year? And the answer is, every single one of them does. Every, 1973, the crash of 73, it's the year of the Shemitah. The collapse of 1980, year of the Shemitah. 87, year of the Shemitah. I already mentioned 94, year of the Shemitah. 2000, or in 2001, year of the Shemitah. And 2007 and 8, year of the Shemitah. So every single one of them has happened according to that. And when you, John, when you expand it to look at the Look at the you know modern times, not just forty years, but the twentieth century, even even the nineteenth century, twentieth century, twenty first century. And you look at the top greatest uh, long term collapses, the top say ten or eleven. The majority of them happen linked to the year of the Shemitah. The the top three of them are, for instance, uh, nineteen thirty seven to thirty eight, the second part of the Great Depression. That 1937-1938 is the year of the Shemitah. Uh, number two is the Great Recession. Again, 2007 and 8, year of the Shemitah. And number one is the Great Depression. Key, pivotal year, greatest crash is 1930-31, year of the Shemitah. In fact, it gets even more, I mean, more like a, like a laser. On the 1937, the, the Shemitah begins the very next day Wall Street collapses. In the Great Depression, the Shemitah reaches its, uh, you know, wipeout day. This is, this is, you know, around September, October. Right, it ushers in the, the greatest month-long crash, proportion cra- um, collapse, in Wall Street or world history. But it gets, it gets even more exact because this mystery also deals with the, not just the year or the time, but the time of year. The, and that's the key. In, in the book, it's called Tishri. And Tishri is the biblical month that ushers in the Shemitah and, more importantly, seals or closes the Shemitah. So every seven years, this month called Tishri comes at the very end of the Shemitah. So it comes at, at that wipeout day. When, when Elul 29 comes and all these, these financial, the financial realm is wiped out, it ushers in at the same moment, ushers in the month of Tishri. So Tishri would be the month that manifests these financial, uh, really, really cataclysm. So, so here's the question. When you look at the greatest day crashes, like when do these crashes appear in the year? Because it could be, you know, statistically it should be one out of 12 any, any month. I mean, it can happen. 
But what do any of these greatest proportion crashes, day crashes, do any of them happen at the time of Tishri, this biblical appointed time of financial cla- of, of remission? Well, the answer is the majority of them do. I mean, the majority, I mean, in other words, where they can happen any time of the year, they, they cluster around the time of Tishri. In fact, they, you know, there are 52 weeks in the year. They cluster all within a two and a half week period on the ancient biblical calendar. And the, the thing is, only a minority happen outside that two and a half week period of the great. And that's why, you know, I'm sure you're aware, you know, for ages, you know, financial observers have noted this phenomenon that, you know, why is it that all that these greatest crashes tend to focus around this one time a year, which is autumn, and particularly, which is September, October. Well, they, they never, you know, they've tried it with all different theories, but the, the thing is, September, October is the biblical month of Tishri that's appointed for it. So you've got the seven-year cycle, you've got the exact, you know, cycle of the, the seven years of the Shemitah, or the seventh year, you have Elul 29 as this wipeout day, and you have the month of Tishri, and you put this all together, I mean, it's mind-boggling, because the other thing is that if you look at the greatest, um, we look at the greatest point collapses, the greatest magnitude of the top five, do any of them happen at the end of the Shemitah year, this time of wipeout? And do they happen in, in any proximity to this Elul 29, this day of wipeout, that only comes once every seven years? Well, the answer is out of the top five, every single one of them happens at the time, at the end of a Shemitah year or cycle, the end of the seven year, and happens in proximity to Elul 29. The average proximity of these greatest point crashes is n- over 99% proximity to the biblical day of wipeout. And, and the other part of this is that, the, I mean, the maybe eerie thing, or for some people the scary thing, is that this phenomenon is getting stronger. And the last two cycles were amazingly eerie, uncanny, exact. And here's what happened. In uh, 2000, 2001, the Shemitah year is approaching its peak, that wipeout time. You ha- in the, right in the last week comes 9-11. You have the, then 9-11, the market is, you know, closed for a week, opens up on September 17th. You have the greatest point crash in Wall Street history up to that day on September 17th. Well, that day, what was that day? That day was not only the ending of the Shemitah, that, that peak time, but that was the day was Elul 29 of the Shemitah, the day of wiping out the financial accounts. On that day comes the greatest wipeout. And it's not just, you know, Elul 29 of one year. It only, this is only one, the one that comes once every seven years. Well, that's exactly what it was. That record holds for, uh, for seven years. It holds until it's finally surpassed in the Great Recession, the Great Financial Collapse, and the greatest peak day comes on September 29th, 2008. It's still the greatest to this day, greatest point crash. And what happens on the day? It, the greatest wipeout. Well, when does that take place? September 29th. Well, that's seven years, but not only is it seven years, that comes on the biblical day on the Hebrew calendar is Elul 29. The other greatest crash happens on the exact same day in pointed in the Bible of the Shemitah, not just not just Elul 29, but of the Shemitah once in seven years. And, you know, it, it happens the, the day that's appointed as the wiping out of financial accounts and that can become a sign of judgment concerning coming calamity of a nation in danger of calamity. So if you look at the, the two greatest crashes, point crashes, up to that 2008, you have, and, and 2008 is still the greatest crash, you have the, each one happens on the same biblical day, each one happens on the once in seven years at the end of the Shemitah, and each one happens seven years apart from the other one, down to the day, down to the biblical day, down to the, the hour, down to the minute, down to the second. That's how eerie or how stunning this thing is. And the thing is, John, is, is you know, the, the warning of the Shemitah, the word in Hebrew, Shemitah, means, uh, can mean the release but it can also mean the collapse or the fall. And the warning from ancient times is that if a nation departs from the ways of God and its foundation in God, um, what's going to happen is the blessings will be removed, it, the prosperity will be removed, and I believe that if we do not turn back, the American age as we know it will collapse. It certainly won't get much argument from anyone as far as the, the moral decay here in all of the West, but particularly America. Now, so what is the day for 2015? <laughs> okay. 
That's okay. what I know. That's what all the listeners are going to be wondering. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and there's much more to that, of course. But yeah, as far as that, well, a few things. First of all, first of all, what I want to give two. I always give two cautions, kind of. A, and the first one is, um, the first one is, you know, it doesn't. God doesn't have to do every, anything when you put him in a box. He generally gets out of it, and the, the you know, it, the cycle can be stronger or weaker. However, it is. It has been intensifying in each time. Um, so I put the first disclaimer to say that you know, it, nothing has to happen. However. Um, you know the the other uh, the other caution is it may very well happen either at the time you know on the day or well or around the time or at that season or the time of Tishri you know um, the pattern is that that in the Shemitah when the Shemitah year which began around October we're still at the beginning of it we're approaching the midpoint um, the pattern is that at the beginning generally you know very much nothing is very dramatic. You might see some foreshadows, which I believe we actually have seen at the beginning of this one. It happened also in 2007. There were foreshadows of what would happen at the end. But the key is that the, is the end time. And so the end part of the year, approaching that wipeout time, approaching August, September. So the, the key is, again, a little, a little 29. Now, a little 29 this year uh, falls on actually a Sunday of September 13th. Now, the interesting thing, there's a few possibilities with this. If something is going to happen in this cycle, the, it could happen just before that, it could happen just after that, it could happen around the season of it and all that. But um, it's interesting because Elul 29 may also, the fact that that's the day in the last two Elul 29s you have this, this collapse, I mean, on the day, and one of them was linked to 9-11, by the way. So, and it was 9-11 that caused the other one. So that means that even 9-11 was part of this timing. So the thing is that what it can point to is that there may be a, a collapse or a calamity that's even, be, that it, even though it's going to affect the financial realm and the economic realm, but it's even beyond the, you know, those realms. The stock market's not open on Sunday. However, the, the last day that the stock market is open, going into, going into a little 29 that weekend, Friday night, Friday will freeze on that last day. That last day is 9-11. You know, interesting, 9-11, which is the fourth anniversary. You know, four, 14 years ago, the market froze at 9-11 as well, froze for almost a week, and then opened up on a little 29 when it, cra- when it collapsed. You know, so... And I, another, would, I would actually yeah. add that if we had a global financial collapse, and right now, in early 2015, we have... The potential for a Grexit, Greece to exit the euro, and I mean that would trigger trillions yep. in derivatives. If you had a derivative triggered meltdown, a lot of people may not realize this. Um, lots of times, uh, the bankers announce big news Friday afternoon after the markets close, right. and the markets actually do close on Sunday if, if you're an American, or if they sorry they open on Sunday if you're an American right. when Asia opens, which is. Um, the Globex opens 6 p.m. Eastern, and um, China tell and the rest, t- the East. John, actually, tell me, t- tell me that. I just, just so everybody I'm, are cl- is clear of that. You're saying it, it opens, it opens 6 p.m. on our t- their time. If you're in New York time zone, if you're in the U.S., Globex markets open every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. Asia opens at 8 p.m. Eastern. So, in the U.S., actually, the markets do open. Not, not our U.S. exchanges. They don't open till Monday morning, but, but, but you can but trade globally. I mean, everything is done globally now. And in U.S. time, it's Monday morning, um, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. Wow. Okay. That's good for everybody to know. Okay. Yeah. So if you did yeah. have uh, an announcement or event that occurred, and like I said, the bankers usually announce them Friday afternoon as soon as the, the New York markets close, Sunday night would be the next time the banking system globally was open. That, that's very interesting. You're the first one who said that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's all, also the other thing is I don't know, if, uh, John, if you've you know looked at these things and it's you know these are just interesting things. But you know there are those who have looked at you know financial collapses and have have looked at uh, you know things that you know things like the moon cycle and other things like that. Well, interesting. You know, and they've noticed something that goes to the autumn often in this and this particular moon cycle, which is the Hebrew month of Tishri again. Um, but the thing is that. Um, during the the at uh, Alul 29 this year, I mentioned it in the book just as one of the interesting things. There's going to be a solar eclipse on that day, you know. And now, now in the Bible, when the sun is darkened, it's actually a sign. It can be a sign of judgment. Not saying that every solar eclipse is, of course, but the interesting thing that it, it's actually on the day of nullification, wipeout. 
the sun is going to be darkened. And the last time that happened, interesting, the last time that that happened was 1987, where on Elul 29 you had the, the darkening of the sun. Well, that ushered in, in that period, if you remember, that ushered in the period that, that contained one, the, one, the, one of the worst crashes in Wall Street history, containing Black Monday, which was the worst percentage crash to this day in, in Wall Street history, was ushered in by that same event. And another time when it happened was in 1931, when it comes on, you know, uh, it's a little 29, ushers in, and the next day is Tishri 1. It happens at that, at that, that time in the Great Depression, 1931. Right after that comes, uh, the Britain goes off the gold standard. You have a, you have the worst month collapse in, in ec- financial history percentage wise. So it's very interesting what seems to be coalescing or converging for this year. And there's several things that are coming together. There's also been a lot of publicity in the alternative media as well about the four blood moons um, over what 2014 and 2015 as well. Yeah, well the thing, well the interesting thing about that is, and for those who don't know, you know what that, you know it's basically a series of these you know lunar eclipses, but where they f- actually fall all on these Hebrew holidays four in a row, and you know when they did that the last few times, you, know, you had some significant events like, um, or at least around that period you had the rebirth of Israel. Around that period, you had the the Jerusalem 1967. These are prophetic things in the Bible, and basically the blood moon period is a year and a half year, a year and a half period. After that first half year, it leads into the rest of that that time is the shemitah. So everything's going to happen during the shemitah. And and there's another thing in the middle of this period. You're going to have a, another one other solar eclipse coming soon, and it's going to mark the exact center point, it's going to mark the exact day that's the center of the Shemitah. And then the other one's going to mark the very last day of the Shemitah, and again, the wipeout, that wipeout time. And it's interesting because, you know, we talk about um, the, you know, we talk about the blood moons or, or the, the Israel and uh, Jerusalem. One of them, and, and tying this together with what we said at the beginning, there is the, one of the things I put at the end of the, of the mystery of the Shemitah, it's called the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, that is that Every, I mean, I'm sure you know it, but for those, every seven years of the Shemitah, but every seven Shemitahs ushers in a super Shemitah, that's 49 years, ushers in the 50th year, which we know as the Jubilee. Well, the Jubilee is really a super Shemitah, meaning, meaning that there's, a, there's remission, there's release, and all these things. But one of the keys about this is that during the Jubilee, it says everyone shall return to the land that they lost. If you lost your land, you lost your, you know, you lost your inheritance, you lost your ancestral possession. It says everyone shall return home and it'll be restored to them, their, their possession, their ancestral home. Well, prophetically interesting is, because this is, this is tying in the Jubilee in a, not in a, so much, not necessarily so much a financial thing, but something that will affect financial things, but in a, a really global thing. And that is that one of the keys in end time prophecy is that the Jewish people have to return to Israel, and then they have to return to Jerusalem. Well, this is a restoration because they've lost their ancestral home for 2,000 years when the Romans drove them out 2,000 years ago. Well, well, the, could it be that the mystery of the Shemitah, and which also deals with financial collapses and even global cataclysms, could that actually give us a key to these prophetic events, actually give the timing, because this thing about the Shemitah gives exact timing, could it give the timing of these 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 prophetic events. Uh, well, here's the thing. Israel, or the Jewish people, it, it, their restoration to the land that began in 1917 when the British Empire took, it, took the land from uh, the Ottoman Empire and gave the land of Israel to the Jewish people to be a homeland. First time in 2,000 years. Restoration. Well, when did that happen? It happened, 1917 was the year of the Shemitah, and actually the, it's the, the Jubilee is sort of the, the year that starts where it ends. Well, that happened in the exact period, autumn of 1917, ordained by this mystery. And then if you go seven Shemitahs into the future, this is to the next ju- prophetic Jubilee, where does it take you? Well, it, it ordains, that. what that does is it ordains a, a, that this next restoration has to take place in the time period of, of September 66, 1966 to September 1967. Well, what happens in the middle of that? The Six-Day War, 
the Jewish, the Israeli soldiers regain Jerusalem. The next restoration, they return to their ancestral possession. And, you know, they sound the shofar at the wall. Well, during the Jubilee, that's what you have to do. You have to sound the shofar. And, and so that's the second one. Well, I'm not saying, again, that it has to continue. It could stop right there. But if it did, where would the next period be? Well, it all converges. The next Shemitah would be the Shemitah, the seventh Shemitah would be 2015 right now. And the period of this kind of prophetic thing would begin in September 2015 to 2016, which could mean, not saying it has to, a, each time it has before, a major war, a global thing, war in the Middle East, uh, focused with Israel, and that leads to a kind of gigantic prophetic event. So even there is this jubilee in that sense, too. This, this mystery is, is, you know, the markets, is the economy, is, the, is even the rise in what may be the fall of America. Yeah, so I guess expand upon that a little bit more, if you would, because uh, the mystery talks about that in your book. Again, not just the, the markets, but the rise yeah. and fall of, of nations yeah. and the potential for America. Yeah, well, here's the thing, John. It's, you know, one of the things about this, and even from ancient times, this mystery of the Shemitah actually led to the, the collapse of the kingdom of Judah, or Israel, and the rise of Babylon, the fall of Babylon, and the rise of Persia. All these things, these world events, were, had to be timed to the mystery of the Shemitah. So the word Shemitah can, be, can mean, as I said, collapse, fall, can even mean the shaking. So could it be linked to the modern times to the shaking of nations? Well, the amazing thing is, it is. The Shemitah of 1917, now 1917, it comes there is not only the year of the Shemitah, it's the year of one of the greatest shakings in world history, global cataclysm, the first world war of nations ever. 1917 is the turning point. It's when America enters the war. You have, the Shemitah means the collapse. You have that, you have the collapse of the Russian Empire, centuries old in that period. It leads to the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, the collapse of the German Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. You have the, you know, Shemitah brings nullifying. You have the nullifying of all these historical things, these kingdoms, and, um, and also it can bring the rise of a nation. Um, the same year America enters the war, begins its rise as the, the uh, really its rise to superpower. And what happens at the same time, you know, the uh, great, the British Empire, which was the greatest creditor nation in the world, it goes into near bankruptcy in the year of the Shemitah, 1917. And, the, and everything switches to America. America becomes the greatest creditor nation in the world and emerges as the center of the world economy. That's 1917. What happens if you fast forward four Shemitahs to the next one? And interesting because four in the, is the number of kingdoms or nations in the Bible. Go to the next Shemitah. That it becomes, it be, it's the Shemitah of 1945. Another global cataclysm. Another, another wipeout thing. And the, the conflict of 1945 actually begins in 1938 when Hitler seizes Austria and Czechoslovakia. And so 1938 is the year of the Shemitah. The Shemitah goes through this seven-year cycle. Well, the whole the conflict becoming World War II goes through a seven-year cycle. The Shemitah will end the first week of September 1945. The war, World War II, will end the same exact week as the Shemitah. And the thing is that, again, it's going to bring the collapse of nations, the, the nullifying of powers and the rise of other powers. It brings the rise of America to superpower in 1945, um, and it brings the Bretton Woods, the, you know, the New World Order based on the dollar, the Bretton Woods system, 1945, and the Shemitah kind of always wipes things clean and brings another order. And it 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 bring, it, answer, it it's really the the Cold War and the Atomic Age all begin. Now, what happens if you go four more cycles of the Shemitah? Takes you to the year 1973. 1973, another key year, not of a war war, but of a very gigan a number of very gigantic turns. One is that America legalizes the killing of its unborn children. That's the, that's the same thing that brought destruction to ancient Israel. The same month as it does that be, uh, begins a financial collapse that will lead ultimately to a global recession, 1973. Same year, same year, uh, Bretton Woods is finished, collapsed for good, is over. What began in the other Shemitah is now collapsed. The, and the same year, America loses its first war, certainly in, in modern times or ever, and it loses it in Vietnam on August 15th. That it's the same date that Japan, Japan surrendered, that America won its greatest war in the other Shemitah. Fast forward four more Shemitahs, and what happens? It takes you to the year nine of 2001, 9-11. As the Shemitah reaches its ultimate, its, its last week, the time of nullification, and remember, we're saying now the Shemitah means also collapse, 
comes the shaking of America. 9-11 comes the collapse of the towers. The Shemitah means the fall, the fall of towers. And remember, those towers represent America's, you know, represented America's preeminence, its global dominance and all that. Well, these are signs. I mean, you know, this, that, that, and I've said this for years, that if America doesn't return morally, spiritually to God, what's going to happen? The, the American age as we know it will come to an end. And the thing is, John, that when this Shemitah began, I mean, and again, the, key, the, the pattern is that the beginning is not dramatic, the end is, but sometimes there are foreshadows of the beginning. Well, when it began, within two weeks of the beginning of the Shemitah, which can mean fall, what happened is the American age that began in 1871, when America became the strongest economic power on earth, that age came to an end when China surpassed America. The crown was passed. Now, that was just the first two weeks of the Shemitah. And I believe that not only are we going to see, um, you know, collapse concerning the financial realm, economic realm, but we may even see the collapse of world power of the, the very dramatic change of history and i am you know while i say at the same time nothing has to happen you know whether it happens in the the exact timing of the shemitah or not i believe a very great shaking is coming to america and it will affect all these realms and it will even likely be greater than just a financial and economic but will affect all of these things and will represent a gigantic change in world history well jonathan with all that, what would your recommendation for, for listeners be as far as preparing? Yes. Well, I do put a number of things in the, you know, in the book concerning that, but, and also the way, you know, the different, uh, there's a number of scenarios where how this collapse can happen and how actually judgment happens. There's a number of scenarios I believe we should be prepared for, regardless of when it happens, because I believe without any question it's, it's going to happen, you know, and the, the timing is the only question. Um, but a few things. For the first part, the first thing is, and I will always start with this, is the spiritual part, and, or the moral and spiritual part, because the, the, the safest place to be is to be in the will of God. So one of the, one of the things about this is there's a connection between the, the wiping out of these realms and the moral the moral, you know, uh, collapse of America, you know, and what's going to be, what's happening. And, you know, I, I did, I did a, you know, you know, the, the first book is The Harbinger, and the harbingers of judgment that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel are reappearing now, and they have not stopped appearing. They are, they have, after the book came out, they're continuing to manifest, which is, to me, telling me that the nation, America, is heading rapidly for judgment and a, a real, a gigantic shaking. So the first thing is spiritual is get right with God. If you're not right with God, get right with Him. If there's something in your life that's not right, get it, get it out of your life now, because that's under judgment. Um, and whatever you need to do, do it now. If you're not sure, you know, if you, people ask for safety, how can I be safe? Well, in Hebrew, the word for safety is Yeshua, and Yeshua is the real name of Jesus. So my first thing is that get your life in Him. If you're not born again, get in Him. But get things right that way first. That's the most important thing. But then, as far as other realms, people ask about, like, investing and all those things. And, of course, like this, you know, the program that you get, you're, you're advised on that. Um, I would just say this, you know, and I'll speak personally for me. I would, I would, number one, I would not feel safe unless I knew something, you know, incredible or there was some revelation. I, in general, I would not feel safe being linked to the stock market, and I would not feel safe. Uh, you know, there's many things that people don't realize, pension accounts that are linked to the stock market. So, number one, I would go for safety. Safety is extremely important um, for this. I would, I would put that as the number one thing in whatever you do financially. Um, as far and then beyond that. Uh, uh, you know, as far as I'm not a survivalist, I'm a revivalist, but I will say this, that it is still wise. There's actually an ancient scripture that says, you know, a wise man sees calamity coming and prepares. And so I do believe it's a wise thing to have a store of essentials, and essentials that will, that in a time of shaking, calamity, chaos, or where even major um, systems can break down and infrastructure can break down and even modes of money can break down, um, that you have a store of essentials because, you know, to keep you in that time. And the worst case scenario is there's no worst case scenario and you can use everything you have. So, you know, people spend all sorts of money on insurance, you know, and, you know, and they don't think twice. Well, this is, I think, uh, even more important. So number one is spiritual. Get right. Get right with God. But number two is is then do what's wise that if there if either this thing, if this all collapsed 
how, what would you need to get by in that time? And then simply uh, do what is common sense, what is, you know, really, I think, very, one of the most practical things you should have anyway, is just have essentials to get you through that time. Well, before we let you go, Jonathan, um, how can people get or where can they find uh, both of the books, uh, The Harbinger as well as the, yeah. the Mystery of the Shemitah? Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah, the the book, the Harbinger, and the Mystery of the Shemitah, which just came out, and the Harbinger, are you can find everywhere, um, online, offline, Amazon, Walmart, every bookstore, they almost um, you can get online right now. So that's available everywhere. And if people want to get in touch with the ministry, because there, it all comes from everything that comes from other things, and there's prophetic updates we give, and also um, free gifts, and we really give out a lot of things free, and the, the, it's just simply a ministry, So, um, but we have all these things, so if they want to get in touch, just remember, it's hope of the world, and just remember .org, and so it's hope of the world .org, and they'll send you free things and whatever they can help you with, um, and, if, and if any of your listeners are in, you know, the, in the New York area, we're about... 20 minutes outside of New York City, which is the Jerusalem Center, which is where I share these things, you know, and it's also televised, but if you're ever there, and also you, John, if you're ever there, you know, feel free. We'd love to have you. All right. Jonathan Kahn, a best-selling author of the, the Mystery of the Shemitah and the Harbinger. Uh, really uh, was a pleasure having you. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thanks, John. Great to be with you. All right. Thanks for tuning in to this week's SD Weekly Metals and Market. Those individuals who are in charge of monetary policy around the world, I think they're very much aware of what is coming. When I've asked Federal Reserve Chairman in the committee about this, they never said, no, that's not going to happen. They used the word orderly. As long as it's orderly, it seems to be okay.